And uh, let's see, who might that be? I think this is the one you made of me a little while back. I'll take my glasses off so they can get a comparison of the mask you made right on my face not too long ago. By golly, when you put that wax on, it felt as if I were being smothered alive. Now, these masks are what you use to form these different character makeups, correct? That's right. For instance, once you used a mask of Anne Francis. This was in a Twilight Zone. In a Twilight Zone thriller. She played a mannequin. Now, this head was mounted on a mannequin body. And this, of course, in vivid color, looks exactly like Anne Francis, right down to the beautiful eyes. This is one of the uses of the mask that you make here. One of the most dramatic ones was the picture of Doreen Gray that goes back a few years. Take that cover off and let's see something that's quite startling. Remember Herd Hatfield in the picture? Here he was uh, as a young, handsome, leading man. And then the, what happened to him here, Bill? That's a slight case of dissipation, to say the least. And then the finale and of the picture? Complete deterioration. And, and to begin with, you made a mac, uh, mask of Herd Hatfield's Herd Hatfield. face and then made these different appliances on the mask so that he would look like this character. Okay? Right. Now let's go in the other room and see how this is done. Now we're showing the mask, and Bill, you're modeling on it. What are you doing? This is for Arthur O'Connell in The Power. Mm -hmm. He gets caught in a centrifuge with his face on the outer rim, and it causes his tongue to pull out and all the facial features to move out. What's the next step after this? The next step is we make a mold of this, as we have done for some ears. Now this is for the extraordinary seaman where we have some Dayak natives with elongated earlobes. I see. We have the molds all set up here, and we're about to pour sponge rubber into the mold. Charlie Schramm, your assistant here, is filling the little molds with liquid rubber. Now, you put a top on it, yes, sir. The top of the mold goes on like so, and it's weighted to create a pressure on it. We have to move very fast on something like that because it sets up very rapidly. We have now filled the molds with the latex. They've gone into the oven to bake. How long, Bill? About two and a half to three hours. And then when you open those up, you have little rubber earlobes that'll go on the natives. I have one of the ones that you already cooked and is ready to go. Please Let's try that on you, okay. Wayne. It fits to the lower part, is adhered with spirit gum, and then this is all colored to match. So it looks as if the man, the actor, has a, a long ear, as the natives would in that part of the world. Now, to kind of wind things up today, I thought Bill Tuttle ought to put one of these appliances on me. And what have we selected, Bill? This is a bald cap. In other words, when you get this on, glued down around the edges, and I guess covered with makeup, it's going to look as if uh, I had nothing on the top of my head. So hold on to your seats. We're going to see how I look completely bald. Well, it looks like he's just about finished. Bill, what have you accomplished so far? You put it on, glued it down, then what? Blended in the edges and then applied the makeup color to the entire cap. Now, this is just one of the many appliances, as they call them, the things that are added to an actor's or an actress's face to make them look uh, some other character. In other words, he duplicates on them the face of another person, or perhaps in some cases, an animal. This time, I'm an old man, out of hair. And I think we're just about out of time. Bill, it's really been a pleasure. I think we've learned a great deal about the makeup department and how these fantastic makeups are done. Head of the makeup department for MGM for 30 years, Bill Tuttle. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wayne. And thank you, too.